Hi, I'm Jonathan Russo, the Connecticut FFA state reporter and a local hydroponicist. Awesome. <laughs> hydroponicist. Excuse me. Super fancy. That's yeah. <laughs> Here we are in your guys' greenhouse. Yep. This is a greenhouse? It is a greenhouse, minus the plastic at the moment. What's going on here, Jonathan? This, greenhouse. this looks yeah. yeah. This looks like something out of, you know, science fiction. Yeah, it's Explain. something like that. For me, this is totally foreign. All my gardens are dirt yeah. and yeah. withering plants. <laughs> Beginning of this podcast, we did an interview. Uh, we heard about deep water beds. Yes. We heard, this is what I have to put up with. <laughs> this one never makes you it to the audio it, exactly. You never see it. So you got NFT. Yep, right there. And this is? This is deep water culture. Deep water culture. Awesome. All so right. we're getting two out of the three. So tell us about your setup here, Jonathan. What are both these things doing? Okay, so at the moment, the systems have just been set up, just getting ready to go. Um, today we're going to do some planting. Awesome. Uh, I started some seedlings over there uh, in a humidity dome. All right. right, so these are our seedlings. Yep, so Have you ever seen those at Compton, Mike? They're no. called plants? <laughs> no, they look like uh, scary, but you know. And that's okay. the actual grow medium. That's yep. the medium. So what is this? So that is rock wool. I've always thought of it as kind of like a rock cotton candy. Uh, it's very similar to fiberglass. Uh, it doesn't hurt when you touch it though. <laughs> we use it as a growing medium to start our seeds. There's a few others on the market, but uh, these in particular are what I've become accustomed to. Cool. They come at a reasonable price and they just work great. The seeds germinate in there, and then from there, these individual cells get broken up and transplanted into what we call a net pot. Now, if we were to sow a seed directly into this, the seed would fall through, right. and it just wouldn't work, which is why we use the rock wool. Nice. Um, so yeah, rock wool goes in there. So it'll go and, in there? Yep, so it goes in here, and then plop it right into the system, set it, forget it. It's awesome. good. The gist is, is that the roots of the plant are being suspended into a body of water, covering them in water that's filled with nutrients uh, for them to avail, uh, absorb as much as they can. Um, you can see here, I've got some floating rafts. Um, the rafts hold the net pots and they float up and down as the water level changes, as water gets lost to evaporation, and as the plants use the water themselves. Um, so yeah, you can just kind of sit, peek under here. Awesome. Yep, so we've got our nutrient solution right here. Uh, and then you can see the bottom of the net pots are suspended there in the water, uh, just so that the roots of the plants can grow through them uh, and dangle in that solution and just grab all of that. So you have to do a lot of, I guess in some ways, kind of like a pool, like just maintaining the, the correct level of, of nutrients and whatnot yes. in the water. How yep. much work does that take normally? It's minimal work. You come oh, really? out here maybe five minutes a day, make sure nothing's dry. Okay. I mean, you just gotta top it off every once in a while to make sure that those roots do say, stay uh, fully submerged in water. Okay. Yeah. And then do you need to add like um, minerals or anything Yes, like you that? do have to add nutrients to it um, on occasion. With this specific setup, I found that at the beginning, I could just add nutrients at a certain level by the time the crop's ready, uh, it'll have used all of the nutrients in the bed. So I actually don't have to do any nutrient changing with these guys because the crop turnover is just so fast. Okay. Um, if I were to do like tomatoes or peppers, I would have to do changes here and there just because their rate of absorption of those nutrients is a lot greater. Okay. Yep. So a tomato plant will will eat up a lot of those nutrients yeah. faster. Yeah. Okay. But here I can just set it and it's good. Alrighty, accountant Mike. So now that we've gone over, <laughs> now that we've gone over what a deep water culture system is, how it works, um, we're going to move into the second kind of system that we run here, which is an NFT okay. or nutrient film technique. So this is still all under the umbrella of hydroponics, yep, right? This is all okay. hydroponics. All right, great. Show right. me. So let's go on over let's here. See. So what we have here is actually a hybrid of an NFT and a deep water culture system. Um, here in the climate that we live in, we do get hot heat waves and whatnot, um, and running an NFT hasn't been amazing uh, in this weather. Reason being is with an NFT system, much like in a deep water culture system, your roots are being suspended in water. But with an NFT nutrient film technique, 
uh, it's just a film of the nutrient solution and it heats up. That's just the way it is uh, because of the weather. So what we've done here is inside of these pipes, we've increased the water level to actually about halfway in there so that there's more cool water running through it uh, so that the plants don't get toasty. Okay. The water stays actually liquid? It's not like a film? Yeah, no, it is water. It's just called film because of the... How um, thin it is. Yeah, the low uh, quantity it. of water okay. moving through it. Cool. Um, but yeah, we found with the extra flow and the higher uh, concentration of water in there, it, it just stays cool and the plants thrive. Awesome. Mm. Yeah. And I can see here, I mean, this NFT system is built by some simple, again, low cost. Yep. What do you got here? You got some PVC? Yeah, so here we've just got some low cost PVC. Uh, and then we also have just some regular PVC, uh, some vinyl tubing. And then we also have a 55 gallon drum as what we call a reservoir. Um, with different kinds of hydroponic systems, you're going to run into some different terminology. Uh, with an NFT and with an ebb and flow, uh, you'll have a grow bed being the tubes and then a reservoir which is where the main supply of water is coming from and then it recirculates Got it. Uh, that's kind of the way that it operates is it is it a constant recirculation yes or? it's constant okay yeah. so it's not like so the water in here is never just just sitting there it's, no. it's always flowing so one of the big questions that i get when it comes to hydroponics is well the roots are sitting directly in water won't they get overwatered? Won't they start rotting? Well, overwatering is actually kind of a myth. Um, it's not so, so much the extra water that's killing your plants, it's the lack of oxygen in that environment oh. that allows your roots to rot. Okay. So in a hydroponic system, all of them have some means of circulating the water okay. to ensure that there's oxygen in there for the plants to latch onto. Okay. So it's fine for the roots to stay submerged in water all the time yep. because they're getting oxygenated along yep. the way. Okay, that makes sense. What's the advantages of using a system like an NFT or your hybrid system? Why would you use that instead of a deep water culture? So one of the main reasons in which one would use an NFT or this kind of system uh, as opposed to the large beds is space conservation. Okay. Um, these can be built vertically, okay. uh, you know, with the deep water culture bed, you know, it's a large bed of water. And if you don't have that kind of space, uh, it doesn't work amazingly. Okay. Um, you know, it's great for us because we have some extra uh, space to have that surface area uh, for growing. But this is great for mounting to a wall like we yeah. have here. Okay. Um, you know, otherwise- Any barn, I mean, yeah. like, shoot, the usable space you can take advantage exactly. of. You could never, the amount of work it would take to put a real garden there with a lot of, real garden that's like offensive to an <laughs> yeah. one of the real gardens <laughs> but yeah. like to put soil garden there yeah that would be insane but yeah. this exactly. i mean it's just some pipes but you could it, put that in your apartment i could yeah <laughs> so other than space concerns anything that you can grow in a deep water culture system you could grow in, in an nft right? yes they are okay. pretty interchangeable and people actually do build nfts uh horizontally side by side okay um, just because it's their personal preference um, that's how they do it it also has a lot to do with the amount of water you're working with um, when you get to larger deep water culture systems it's hundreds and even thousands of gallons of water at mm -hmm. once um, with these you could scale your reservoir up and down as you need okay um, yeah okay that makes sense it, it also suits uh, different crops a little bit better Okay. Uh, yes. The deep water culture is excellent for lettuces, green things that grow quickly. Growing tomatoes in it wouldn't necessarily work out as well because okay. they have a high nutrient requirement yeah. and you don't want okay. oxygen. In the NFT system like Jonathan has put up here, you put strawberries in here. And as yep. you know, strawberries oh, sprawl yeah. and they hang. Oh, yeah, so man. you can have, so you can have oh, grapes right. of strawberries yeah. just hanging down. That would be that, gorgeous. Because that wouldn't be yeah, a, yeah. that wouldn't create any sort of problem if you no, have, not at you know, all. this yeah. sort of you've, thing going you've on. You've come out okay. about seven inches from the wall, uh -huh. and you get the whole wall space. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so that's the beauty of it. So we could put another rail on the bottom. You could do another rail on the top against the back walls. Yeah. yeah. And your increase in cost is considerably less. You know, you look at this tube. This is a waste tube. Typically, yeah. people put them on the end of their gutters. Yeah. They're eight bucks. But you can buy the thick, hard, real, rigid PVC, which are 35 bucks yeah. a pop. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we use the waste tubes because A, they don't heat up and they shed the heat quicker because they're thinner. And instead of buying all the expensive hangers 
I just use ports. Love yeah. It. You know, That's great. Up, so, cool. so you've done some installations, right, Jonathan? Yeah. Um, have you ever, like, and I, I just had this idea, looking at this and listening to what Vince just said, could you, like, could you get some fancier looking pipe, yeah. right? Fancier, fancy this up a little bit and make it like a decorative install wall. Yes, I've actually seen a lot of those. I've got a ton of friends in the industry that actually do that as their cool. main thing. Um, growing walls, living walls, that's kind of what they're called. Um, they're all wall mounted hydroponic systems. And then they'll plant like mosses, uh, strawberries and that kind of thing. Something that things looks that, nice. Yeah, things that drape ivy. Okay. Um, and then it'll just turn the whole thing green and it's beautiful. And I imagine yeah. they even would could or would put that like inside their house if they wanted to, yeah. right? Yep. No, okay. I know I know a lot of people that have them in like their restaurants. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. cool. That's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's wow. very cool. Jonathan, thank you so much for showing us all this, the deep water method, the NFT. Uh, before I came here, I hadn't actually seen a system in working yet. I had seen online pictures and I already talked a lot about these as we're preparing for this episode of the podcast. But it still seems so overwhelming to me. Like, I'm that's like science fiction. I'm not yeah. gonna bother. It's the Death Star, and I don't know how to make one, let alone the second one. This looks like something that anybody who is interested in it could do. Uh, low cost, very simple setup. You have taken what seemed like sci fi and just made it so accessible. So, thanks, man. This was great. And uh, if anybody wants to get a hold of you, learn more. You sell kits, yep. uh, do some consultations. Yep. How do they get a hold of you? All right, so the best way to get hold, a hold of me is at fairfieldcountyhydroponics.com. Uh, I have a very simple contact form on there. You could get in touch with me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Jonathan does installs. Uh, he can do a consultation for an install. He can sell you kits. Yeah. If you're interested, this guy, he's the guy to get a hold of. <laughs> so Jonathan, thanks for taking the time today, man. Hey, it's been a huge help. Coming. If you'd like to see a video where Jonathan breaks down the construction of both of these systems, Homesteady Pioneers have access to that video in the Pioneers Only Library. Pioneers also get a 10% discount on Jonathan's kits, his systems, his plans, his consultations, anything you'd like. There's a whole lot more videos and discounts in the Pioneers Only Library. It's just five bucks a month. You help to support Homesteady, and in return, you get bonus content and lots of discounts. Head to thisishomesteady.com to learn more about becoming a pioneer.